Hello again and welcome. In an earlier video I described how to make your own differential probe. This was my first attempt, so then I went on to make this probe. Again, this is basically the same design. This probe had a bandwidth of about 800 kilohertz, so I thought in this video what I'd like to do is build something that had a little higher bandwidth. So Mixig offers a differential probe, it's a part number DP10013. That probe has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz, and I believe it goes up to 1,000 volts. They currently offer that probe for $130, so based off of that, why would I attempt to build my own differential probe? So if you watched any of my videos, there's one where I modified an old 1960s vintage Tektronix current probe, where I increased the bandwidth from 50 megahertz to 100 megahertz. I also took a Unity UT210E current clamp and that had a bandwidth I think of like two or three kilohertz out of the box and I redesigned that whole front end and I got that thing up to a hundred kilohertz. For me electronics is a hobby. I enjoy experimenting and designing things with electronics so I'm really just going to design this probe for the fun of it. It's not even something I really ever have a use for. So the only goal I really have in this video is to show you I can design a probe that has a higher bandwidth than this. And how much higher? I would say, let's say 10x. So if I can do a probe like this that'll get me 8 megahertz of bandwidth, I would say this video is successful. So to build a high-end differential probe, of course cost will come into play. So what I'm going to attempt to do is use the parts that I have on hand. And one of the parts is this film resistor from KDAC. I showed this when I made this probe here. You can see I have two of these in here. This is about a $40 network. So I had salvaged four of these off of a circuit board. So I have two more of these things sitting around. So I'm thinking I'm just going to stay with these. These are a 100x divider. Another thing that I had salvaged is some of these type N launch connectors. So I'm going to use these launch connectors in place of my banana connectors. But here's the key. I had built that original probe on perf board. And I plan to do the same thing with this one. Of course, if you design any kind of high-speed circuitry, you know that this is definitely not what you want to be using. Again, all we have is just an array of pads. There are no plated through holes, so there's no ground plane. So what we're going to use, this is some foil tape. This is made by 3M. So it has an adhesive on the back side. So I've done this before. The way this kind of works, is you take your tape and again you can put this on both sides of the circuit board so let's say that's my ground plane and let's say I have another plane beneath this I'll literally take a sewing needle and then I can run along this array and I'll poke holes through this Then what I'm going to do is take wire wrap wire and I'm literally going to stitch these two planes together. Of course there's no way to make any kind of a micro strip or a strip line with a board like this but that's where the X-Acto knife comes in. I think for 8 megahertz though, you know, really it's not going to be that much of a problem. I'm not expecting any kind of stellar performance out of this probe. So my plan is just to stay with a fixed gain probe so again there won't be any switches on the probe I'll probably just again use a wall wart to drive it so this is looking at the schematic for that second probe that I had built so again this is our input and I have a couple of surge rated resistors and those are in series with these PTC's and then I have three MOVs that go to the ground and then I have two in this case 20 mega ohm resistors with a 200k shunted to ground and that's giving me my 100 to 1 ratio and then I have a series of capacitors here and then another one down here that I trim and then I have this instrumentation amplifier that was built out of discrete op amps so one of the questions that somebody had asked me was why didn't I just make this a buffer on both sides and I pointed out that you know if you wanted to make this a variable gain type amplifier really what you want to do is make sure that this is all very symmetrical that means all the lengths, the placement of the parts and everything is basically the same between the two inputs. 
So this is a very nice way to select the gain because essentially you're only changing one resistor and that's changing the gain for both channels simultaneously. But again I had mentioned that for all app amps as you move away from a gain in one the bandwidth is going to decrease. So I think for this probe to be successful my plan is to just make everything a gain of one. So we'll start out with a hundred to one ratio here. This section will be a gain of one and then out here this could be a divide by two. So I could end up with like a 200 to one ratio or something with this new probe. All right, so again, for this probe, we would like a bandwidth of eight megahertz. And I think what I'd like is a probe that can at least read 200 volts, maybe higher. We'll see how this works out. Based on these two numbers, we could take two pi at eight megahertz at 200 volts. And we said this is going to have a divisor ratio of 100 to 1. 200 volts will give us an input to the op amp of 2 volts. So 2 volts here. And this will give us a slew rate of, let's see, I think that's right. So 100 volts per microsecond. Let me just punch that back in. That's right, 100.5 microvolts per second. So that's a pretty slow slew rate as far as modern op amps. Because we're using a 20 mega ohm resistor, the input bias currents will have to be quite low. I'd say if we could find something that is, you know, somewhere around 50 pico amps, two times five, so one millivolt of air, which is probably pretty good. Again, if you're really wanting something that's accurately gonna measure your differential signal, I'm assuming you're using a meter. This is meant to be a high-speed probe used for an oscilloscope. And of course, an oscilloscope isn't going to be all that accurate to begin with. So if I were trying to design something that I was planning on keeping around, that I actually had a need for, I'd probably pick different values for some of these. So again, my plan is just to have an N-type connector for the front. And again, this will go through some surge-type resistor. And what I'd like to do is not use a PTC this time. Again, my goal here really is just to obtain this 8 megahertz of bandwidth and again do that on a piece of perf board, so no circuit board. So the input of this will go to our KDAC part. And again, we have a second channel and these two are identical. So this is our 20 meg and this is our 200K. Actually, you know, I mean this is a precision divider so this isn't quite 20 meg and I'll certainly have you know, some type of compensation network out here. I don't know what this is going to be. And again, there'll be some type of capacitor that's in parallel with this 20 meg. So all this will be the same as what we had before. The big difference this time is we're just going to drive these straight into a gain of one buffer. And then this will go to our difference amplifier. And this will be our output. And again, probably what I'll do you use an amplifier that's capable of driving a 50 ohm piece of coax. So the output of this will have a 50 ohm resistor. So this will give us our divide by two. This will all be set up with a gain of one. So overall this will give us a 200 to one ratio. So previously again I used MOVs. What I'm thinking to do this time is to use gas discharge tubes. And the reason I'm thinking to do that over the MOVs is I can get some parts that are very low capacitance. And again, it's all about bandwidth. So I'm just trying to give this thing every chance possible to actually hit that 8 megahertz. So again, we said we needed 100 volts per microsecond slew rate. The only thing we'd want to know is what our rise time is. And again, if we just take 0.35 divided by the frequency in gigahertz, this will give us our rise time in nanoseconds. So if we just divide that by 0 0.008, that gives us 43.7 nanoseconds. So again, quite slow. I'm confident that I could probably pull this off, you know, as long as we select a good op amp for it. So if you've been watching my last few videos, this is the gas discharge tube that was inside of that modem. So in my last video, I had this thing hooked up to this half cycle line simulator and again the way this thing works is this transient generator below will put out a high voltage pulse. This doesn't have the ability to supply any kind of high voltage. So this high voltage pulse off of this 
lets this generator know that it's time to put out a pulse. Unfortunately, when I was running these gas discharge tubes, these have a fairly low breakdown voltage. So what ended up happening is I wasn't able to actually trigger this generator. So I put the two in series and what ended up happening is the other gas discharge tube basically exploded. This one stayed together, but you can see the glass is just shattered. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking this gas discharge tube, which I plan to use on this new differential probe. You can see this has a 800 volt rating. You can see it's quite a bit larger. And what I'm going to do is repeat this using our half cycle line simulator. And let's just see if we can get this small gas discharge tube to finally explode. So let me set that up. We're going to be applying about a 5,000 volt transient off of the small generator. That's going to be with a 2 ohm source impedance and a 100 microsecond full width half height. And hopefully again that will be followed up by the half cycle line simulator. Let's just see what happens. Uh, it looks like we have the same problem. The breakdown voltage is again just too low and it won't trigger that second generator up. Well that's too bad. Right, I wonder if we just didn't damage this the last time I ran it. Let's just have a look. As you can see our one gas discharge tube is still in open. Oh look at this. That thing is a dead short. Alright, so I have this thing connected directly across my bench power supply. I'm just going to start turning that thing up. Let's just see what happens. Get the rubber boot away from it. I'm pushing 6 amps through that thing right now. Boy, it must really be shorted because that thing is ice cold. I can't do anything more to this particular device, but at least it shows that these new gas discharge tubes should work just fine for protecting our probe. Again, these are rated for 800 volts, and the resistors that I'm using, I believe, are rated for 2kV, so about half of the voltage of the resistor. That's plenty of margin. I doubt I'd be able to damage that probe using these. Alright, let's see if we can finally finish this thing off. See on the left, we have the big power supply out. Alright, we'll be sweeping the current from one amp up to whatever it takes to open this thing up. beef things up a little more. Alright, so you can see I have much larger cables attached. Let's just try it now. We'll sweep it on up to 100 amps. Not a very spectacular death. Let's have a look. All right, let's check it now for continuity. It's definitely an open. See the main body is still in place. 
I took some high-res pictures under the microscope of that other GDT as well. Alright, back to the task at hand. So these are the parts I'm planning on using. These are in a SOT 235. So it's a 5 pin op amp, about the size of a SOT23 transistor. These parts are pretty good, they'll meet the 50 pico amp, actually it's quite a bit better. Uh, this is worst case, it's plus minus 50 pico amps. I think the typical for the input bias current for this particular op amp is about 2 pico amps. Of course if you run that probe in the two temperature extremes of the op amp, this input bias current is going to go up quite a bit. Again, we need something that will do this 100 volts per microsecond. So the part that I'm planning on using is closer to about 2500 volts per microsecond. Using a part like this will carry its own problems trying to build this up on perf board. So my plan is to go ahead and start putting something together to give this thing a try. We'll just see how it turns out. I mean, to be honest, again, I don't have a lot of hope for this thing. If it cracks 8 megahertz and looks somewhat decent, I'm going to be pretty amazed. And again, if it does even better than 8 megahertz, I'd be quite surprised. Again, if I really wanted to make something nice, I'm not going to do that on a piece of perf board. But I think that's going to add something to the video. You know, everybody nowadays just goes out and they'll order circuit boards for everything. There was a time when you didn't actually have the ability to do that as a hobbyist. So typically you just made do with what you had. And that's what I want to show in this video is basically I'm just going to make do with the parts that I have on hand. And, you know, we'll run these better op amps that I bought. Uh, but the rest of this is just going to be made out of scrap parts essentially that I had. Again, granted, kind of expensive parts. So here's what I've come up with. You can compare that against the first two probes. You can see it's quite a bit smaller. First of all, you'll notice it's using a SMA jack for the output. This is the power input. This is our power supply. This area down here, this is our instrumentation amplifiers. Here's our two input connectors. Let me just go ahead and pop the cover off. So again, I've made this out of just plain perf board. You can see all the solder. This again is wire wrap wire. And that's stitching this ground plane to another ground plane that's located on the bottom side of the board. You can see it up in here. These are our two surge rated resistors. You can see I've set these for 1.5k ohms. Here's our two gas discharge tubes. You'll notice that basically all I've done with these film resistors is I put a piece of Kapton tape over the side of it and then I put a piece of that copper foil over the top of that Kapton tape. That is acting as my high frequency capacitor. Under here you can see I have a few different capacitors. Those are accessible through these holes. So under this cover, you can see this is soldered down to the base. This is all made out of mu metal, and this contains our three op amps. And the reason this is all covered up is to help reduce the noise. Of course, these again are 20 mega ohm resistors. So putting your hand near this without that outside metal shield is going to affect it. Having the shield on will make it a lot less sensitive. On the left you can see I have one of our high voltage power supplies out. So the Brahmin on the left is attached to the output of this power supply. You can see I can turn it up. There's 230 volts. And then the Brahmin on the right is attached to the output of our test probe. You can see the inputs are marked red and black. So I've made up a couple of test probes. And these just have a couple of banana connectors on these. Let's just go ahead and turn this up a little bit. So this is currently putting out 22.2 volts and our probe is outputting 22.3 or so. Now again, I said that this section of circuitry here is 100 to 1 ratio and our gain of our amplifier is set to 1 and then we have a divide by 2 on the output. So overall this should be a divide by 200 probe but you'll notice it's a divide by 100. 
And the reason for that is the meter on the right is not terminated with 50 ohms. That's a 10 mega ohm input. So right now for DC it's acting as a divide by 100. So let's go ahead and turn this up a little bit. So there's 140 volts. Again, my goal for this probe was to hit 200 volt. And you can see it's pretty close right there at 200 volt. It's off by, looks like 100 millivolts. Nothing you could read with a scope, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and turn it up higher. I'm expecting this is going to tap out somewhere around 3 volts. Yep, right there it's starting to compress. So about 3.7, in our case V peak is equal to 3.7 volts. So the app amp that I'm using for this can't drive rail to rail. So they specify this thing to operate at plus or minus uh, 6 volts. And I'm running it off of 5 volts, plus or minus 5 volts, so we have a 10 volt supply. They specify this thing to run a volt and a half or so off of the rail, which is pretty close to what we're seeing with this. So this is pretty much expected. So let's just adjust this down so I know that we're nowhere near where it's starting to compress. We'll just run it at 300 volts. So let me go ahead and inverse the polarity. Not too bad. Again, I don't even have an adjustment for that offset. So again, this power supply will put out about a thousand volts. So that's more than enough to actually fire the gas discharge tubes. So all I'm going to do is attach the ground output to our case. And we'll just attach one of our input leads to the high voltage output. And let's go ahead and turn this thing up. And again, we said this was a 800 volt gas discharge tube. Right there. Just move it to the other input. Let's go ahead and turn it up again. And we can see the tube on the right is now firing. And you can see it's no problem. It's still functional. We should be able to take this thing right on up to a thousand volts across the two inputs. And you can see nothing breaks down. It's just fine with this. Now again, I could rescale this so we could actually read a thousand volts. I could set the whole thing up as a divide by a thousand. It'd be fairly simple just to add one resistor on each leg and that would give me a divide by a thousand. So a thousand volts would essentially give me one volt at the oscilloscope with the 50 ohm terminator uh, so I just again I really don't have a need for this probe so I'm not really going to tweak this at all but again if you were going to build something like this you basically decide whatever ratios you need and then just pick the values accordingly for this next test I've got my transformer out and again this is providing me my isolation between my function generator and the probe so the output of the transformer attaches to the two type ends and then down here I have my bench power supply. This is going to be applying my common mode voltage. So these two leads here are going back to our bench power supply. You can see the negative side goes to the Brahman on the right. Again, this meter is looking at the output from our probe. And you can see the common lead for this meter also goes back to the Fluke 189 on the left. The Fluke on the left, its positive input is going to our positive lead of the power supply. So this is just looking at the common mode voltage, essentially. And this Brahman, is, again, is just looking at the output of the probe. This Brahman in the center is looking at the output voltage of the transformer. So just to be clear, these two outputs are identical. These are hardwired inside of my box. So one is just banana connectors versus this BNC. Just makes it more flexible when I use this box. So you can see the output of our transformer is roughly 37.79 volts. The output of our probe is 37.57 volts. You can see it's at 100 hertz, and there is no DC offset. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and start to turn up our power supply, and let's see what effect that has on the output of our probe. And 
this is the limit of the power supply so that's 50 volts of common mode voltage right there and you can see that's having no effect and again it shouldn't have any effect until we're into the several hundred volt range so the type N connectors are rated for 1500 volts so these wouldn't be my choice if I want to run a real high voltage probe I'd probably go to like an SHV or something let's go ahead and invert the voltage off the power supply and you can see again no effect on it at all and you can see it has no effect on our bias as well so this is going to be a similar test you can see I'm using the ground post of the oscilloscope off to the right again this goes back to the earth ground or the chassis ground for this scope these two wires go to my bench power supply so you can see the negative of the bench power supply is attached to that ground and I have the Bryman meter on the right attached across the output of that power supply the positive lead is attached to one of the inputs of our probe you can see we are currently putting out 20 volts and again this is at 100 Hertz and we can see our oscilloscope is reading 101.3 and you can see it's set for a 50 ohm input impedance so we actually have the divide by 200 right now and what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and increase our DC voltage and you can see that's having no effect on our oscilloscope whatsoever and this is all the way up to 50 volts of common mode voltage and no problems at all we can go ahead and invert the polarity of that and there you go so there's minus 50 volts again no effect at all let's try putting in a little faster signal Currently our function generator is set for 10 volts peak to peak or 5 volts peak which would be 0 0.707 times 5 gives us 3.535 volts and let's just have a look on our scope and you can see it's reading 3.558 or so have a look at the output of our probe and that looks like 17.8 millivolt so if we take our 3.535 and divide that by 200 you can see it's roughly 17.67 millivolt versus 17.7 17.8 so again fairly close this is currently at 100 Hertz what I'm going to do is change this over to a square wave. So again, the pink trace is our 10x probe. This is a little bit of overshoot. Let's just go ahead and we'll tweak this a little bit. Looks pretty good right there. And again, the yellow is the output off of our probe. So you can see the two probes track fairly close. Let me just go ahead and flip the two leads. So this is currently at 10 hertz. Let's have a look at the edge. So this is currently 2 microseconds per division. You can see there's still a little bit of overshoot with our 10x probe. And there's a little bit of ringing here it looks like with our differential probe. Let's just go ahead and zoom in a little bit further. And here we can start to see Quite a bit of roll off right in the start of this. This is currently looking at 50 nanoseconds per division. Uh, this is currently looking at 5 nanoseconds per division. One of the things you want to make sure you're doing is twisting up your leads if you're making a test like this. And of course we could compensate this. So let's just try cranking this up a little bit. As you can see we could improve the rise time. These op amps again have a fairly fast slew rate. This is my Tektronix P6013 high voltage probe. It's attached to one of our high voltage power supplies. This is going to be outputting a high voltage 50% duty cycle square wave. And again the output of this is connected to our differential probe. So both of these probes are in parallel and they're attached to our oscilloscope. 
So you can see both probes are set for 100 volts per division. And our time scale is 20 nanoseconds per division. And let me just go ahead and we'll start increasing the amplitude. So there's 100 volts. There is 200 volts. Again, the red trace is our tectronics probe and the yellow trace is our differential probe. Before we put the scope away, one of the things I thought of is we should look at the noise of this. So I'm just going to use this through terminator to tie the two inputs together. Again, I'm using a switch mode power supply for this. So that's going to bleed a lot of noise through. Let's just turn it all the way up. So this is currently 2 millivolts per division. So you can see we have about 2, 4 millivolts peak to peak. Well, I could believe it is the power supply. If we just look at the primary frequency, it's roughly 260 kilohertz, 265 or so. So yeah, I can believe that's all switch mode power supply noise. Again, there's a lot of things I could do to improve on this probe. If I ever build another one that I actually intend to use, there's some things I'm going to change and we'll start with these uh, film resistors on the front end. Uh, definitely pick a better ratio for what I would normally use a probe like this for. Alright, let's get the network analyzer out. You can see I have our two inputs to our probe attached to this adapter and then I have the two inputs of it strapped together so these two are shorted. Then I have this other adapter. This is tied between the chassis ground and the inputs. I'm going to inject my signal here and then I'm going to read back the output off the network analyzer. So we're going to look at the common mode rejection of this probe. So let's just see. We'll go to measurement type, uh, network analyzer. And we'll short the two inputs together. And we can do measure cal and measurement through. Let's do a start frequency, just get 10 kilohertz, and let's say a stop frequency oops, of 50 megahertz. So with the leads disconnected, of course we're reading, this is minus 90 dB down. Probe's not going to be that good, I'll guarantee you that. And and hook up the output. Not too shabby, really. So this is about 63 dB down. Start getting down into the DC area. It's about 75 dB. So yeah, it looks like the rejection is pretty good for the probe. Let's have a look at the flatness. So again, the output of the network analyzer will go straight to the two inputs, and the output of the probe goes back to the input of the network analyzer. That is impressively flat. And this is uh, 10 dB per division right now. Let's just uh, change the scaling on this. Just do auto scale. So this is 1 dB per division. So I'm just uh, zeroing off our peak. So now as I move this down, this is about 3 megahertz here, and you can see it's about 2.8 dB down. And then 9 megahertz, it's about 1.9 or 2 dB. Here we're at 3 dB. Uh, this is 17 megahertz. There's 3.2 dB. It really dips out here. This is uh, 33 megahertz, and it looks like it's almost uh, 4.5 dB. It's bouncing between 4.72 and about 4.58. Then you can see it rises back up. Uh, it's about 2 dB down. Let's push this thing out a little bit further. Let's take our stop frequency up to 100 megahertz. Oh yeah, it's 
it's, it's getting pretty bad out here. This is 5 dB down. Let's change our start frequency to 1 kilohertz and our stop frequency to 10 kilohertz. We'll just look at the low frequency response. This is currently 2 dB per division. Let's go to 20 kilohertz. That looks pretty good. Uh, sweep. And let's change this over to log. And stop frequency. Let's push this out a little further. Let's go up to 50 kilohertz. Auto scale. This is currently a half a dB per division. You can see it's got this kind of a gradual slope up. So yeah, not too bad for a piece of perf board. I think if I were to build this thing up with a circuit board and, like I say, maybe rescale it, this would actually do a fairly decent job for such a simple design. Again, this is really nothing more than an instrumentation amplifier built out of three discrete op amps and, you know, just basically a divider network on the front end. The only novel thing here is maybe just putting that copper foil across that film resistor. And again, that's there for my high frequency response. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. So, so I received this the other day. I have not opened it up yet. Of course, made in China. It's a new meter. That's what it looks like. Uh, Amazon was selling this thing for under $10. You can see it has quite a few functions. I can pretty much guarantee you that if I run my standard transient test on this, uh, this meter is not going to perform very well. So if you would like to see me, rather than just finding out where this meter gets damaged at, like what I typically do, maybe look at modifying the front end of this so this thing will actually survive some kind of a hit, I'd be fine with doing that as well. So. You know, feel free to leave your comments about what you'd like to see done with this meter in the comment section. Well, that's all for now. Till the next video. Later. I had a little bonus footage. Now that this thing's blown open. Let's try it one more time with this half cycle line simulator. Alright, we're armed. Here it goes. Looks like it might have burned the copper foil that attaches up to the GDT. Let's give it one more try. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, that definitely took care of it. You can see split it right in two. There's nothing left of that part now. That's what I wanted to see. Alright, later.